Hello, simulation nodes is the title of this tutorial. So here's a little bit of a background info. A while back, I think it's already like even a few years back now, I made some tutorials here about visualizing audio spectrum in Blender using animation nodes. And it was kind of a complicated setup. Um, people are still following these tutorials now and they're still having some issues with it. It works, but like I said, it's complicated. It's not very straightforward. There is a, something new in animation nodes. Actually, it's been there now for a few months, but I only got around to try playing with it uh, recently. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you what that's about. It's called simulation nodes. It's a very cool concept. And today we're going to learn how to create this. music by the way visit chrisp.zone slash music for amazing music and sound effects for creators let's jump right into blender and see how it's done here I am in blender 3.0 by the way, the person who created these extra notes for animation notes uh, also made a tutorial. And please go visit his channel, watch the tutorial, uh, subscribe to his channel, show him some love. I'll link to his channel down below. And I'll also link uh, where you can download the latest build of the animation notes and his extra notes, uh, which even works now in Blender 3 Alpha. Okay. So first of all, we want a grid that we can put our audio waveform or our spectrum onto, right? So we just go shift a grid. Oh, by the way, screencast keys. Oh, okay, so shift a mesh grid. Uh, what do we want? 10 by 100. Okay, so if we go into edit mode, it looks like this. So now we're gonna go scale Y 10. And then we have squares. We have this long grid of squares cool so this is what we are going to use for the audio spectrum now we can go into animation nodes create a new node tree switch off always as always well let's just start with these new simulation nodes so there's a new menu entry here simulation and really there's only one node in here which is called simulation input then you click output and you get a simulation output so what is this about First of all, it has nothing to do with uh, physics simulations or other simulations in Blender. It is a way of storing data and pushing that data from one frame to the next frame. So this is essentially a loop. You start with some initial data and in between here, you work with that data, you create your simulation and you can use all of the animation nodes and math and all of that to do whatever you want. And then you push it back out into this node, which then brings that data back into this node on the next frame. Okay. So it sounds very complicated, but it's actually, it's just like a loop based on data and it remembers that, that data. So what is that data? It is this gray socket type and that is actually the struct data type. Struct is like, um, like a class or an object with properties. So uh, think of it like a person has a first name, which is of data type string and a birthday uh, data type date, right? A struct can be like, let's say vertex locations and it's a list of vectors. And then you have like a list of uh, floating point numbers or whatever you want to plug into your struct. That's what you have to plug in here. And that's what you get out of here. So really the first thing you always do with these simulation nodes is you need set struct element and get struct elements. And the creator of this wonderful, uh, these uh, nodes has even put those in here for convenience. Because first of all, we need to plug some struct, some initial data in here. 
Then in here, we need to get that data out. And back here, we have to plug a struct back in so that it comes back on the next frame into our loop. First, we just start with data, like our initial data. We want a float list. Okay, and I'm gonna call it volume because that's gonna be uh, one value for each of all of these uh, vertices from the sound spectrum. So I'm gonna call it vol volume. And to start with, I need a list of uh, floating point numbers, of zeros for each vector. So how many is that? If I switch on, where is it, the statistics, I have them all selected and it's 1,111. But there's an easier way. I just go object, um, or I go mesh input, take the grid, and then I have vertex locations. And this is the amount of zeros that I want to start with. So I'm going to create a list, list uh, fill. The element should be zero. How many? This many. Okay, like that. And then the list is my volume. And this, all of this here, this is just, so I have something to start my loop with. Okay, so in here, I want, I want to get something out of my struct. What? Well, a float list. And it's called volume. And here we go. So now, here we have a floating point list. We can do something with it. And back there, Shift D, we have to plug that in here. So this really is our loop. And in here now, we can do whatever we want to simulate. And this setup with these nodes is going to take care of the data and the memory storage that whatever we plug out here will come back in here on the next frame. Okay, so let me delete all of this. Well, we want sound spectrum. So let's do that. Shift A, sound, sound spectrum node. Cool. It needs the frame, so we need the animation time info. We can plug that in here. Uh, we can get some song uh, sound in here by going to the video editor. And then I have a song here. Remember, crispy.song slash music. I'm just gonna drag that in here. I can uh, display the waveform so that I can see where it starts. I'm on frame one here and I just want the music to start right away. So just move that over. So all we have to do, now we can pick the song here, and here we get the sound spectrum. So we get for certain frequencies, we get a floating point uh, value, um, and we get 20 of those frequency slots at the moment. But we know that we have, if we go in here and go into edit mode, because of the way we set up our grid, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, uh, we need 11 values in our sound spectrum, right? So just plug in 11 here. Cool. So what do we do with this? Well, we have to loop this in our simulation loop. So here, uh, let me get a viewer note. This is uh, 1,111 zeros. Okay, we use that. And in here we get 11 values from the sound spectrum. So if I hit play, you can see we have values here. This is the sound spectrum. Cool. So how, how do we do this? We want to plug a 1,111 floating point numbers in here. And we want to put, let's just start by putting the sound spectrum onto the first 11 of those, okay? So we have to do some list operations. Like for example, we take a slice, we slice um, starting at 11, no end. So we take all of the values except for the first 11. Okay, that's that list. And here we have 11 values. So we can go list combine float, 
we have new values for the first row and then all the other rows and that's our new list going out here so let's just go viewer node what does that look like hit play we only have 11 values now this is not correct why is this so let's go back to frame one try this again yep that looks good so we're we're playing with our first 11 entries here all the other ones are still zero awesome this is a good start let me organize this a little here because it has to be clear to you that all the magic is happening in here right all of these other nodes here these are just for starting something <laughs> these are just for plugging our data back into the next frame and now we have 1111 floating point numbers what can we do with those uh, we have to move our vertices in the mesh okay so here we have mesh and back here we're gonna create new mesh so mesh object output we create a new target object we enable this mesh here how do we create a mesh we go to mesh combine that gives us a mesh and then if we just take these vertex locations and on this node in the front here we can go n to the node and we can enable the edge indices and the polygon indices here this output we don't need the polygon centers right so if we just connect this up it's we're basically copying our grid over without changing it into a new object called target cool so now we can hide our grid we just want to see this target and of course nothing's happening yet because we're not doing anything um, because now we have to actually change these vertices and we do that in a little loop right we have um, 1111 floating point numbers for this entire grid and for each vertex we have one of those numbers and we have to assign that number to the C location we want to keep X and Y so we just need a little tiny loop that loops over a vector list and we also have to plug in our uh, the, the values our float list coming from our simulation loop what do we do in here uh, first of all let's create a generator output we want a vector list so vector in vector out in here we can go vector separate pang separate and combine we keep x and y and we use our float for c then whoops we create an invoke node and this is exactly what goes in here because we're changing our, uh, our vectors but we also have to plug in our float list so this is this guy goes in there cool so this is what we have so far now let's hit play yep we have the sound spectrum in the front here okay that's what it looks like but we don't have anything um, moving yet we only have the sound spectrum on the first row of our grid let me set this end to 1000 and also plug this in here 1000 frames for our simulation by the way the simulation input node here gives you start frame and end frame so you can create a simulation in animation nodes for just a certain part of your entire timeline also very handy cool so this is it let's lay out this so that the flow goes from left to right okay makes sense this is where all of the magic is happening in here but of course we want this sound spectrum shifting backwards moving backwards over time that's the entire idea of this memory concept we keep 
the data, the information that we had from all the previous frames, and we can still work with it. And really all we need to do now is one extra node. Since we're working with a list of floating point numbers, we can use a list shift in the front here, and we can tell it shift my entire array back 11 positions. So our entire list of floating point numbers, which is just zeros at the beginning, we shift that back 11 positions. Um, and then we cut away the first row and we create a new row. So we shift it back 11 positions. We cut away the first 11 uh, numbers. We create 11 new numbers coming from our sound spectrum, right? 11 new numbers in the beginning, uh, in the front here. Then all the numbers from our history, uh, historical data. And this is our new number for the next iteration. Let's see if it works. Now stuff shifted around a little, you know what? This is my loop, put that over here. So this is our entire node tree. Uh, let me just save this quick and let's try it out. Let's go to frame one, spacebar. Awesome. Okay, so if this amplitude is a little too high, you can set that down to three. And it's working beautifully. Cool, 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 cool. Actually, we're done, but just to have a complete tutorial here. What you saw in the beginning was a little bit more than this because what I did was, let me go to my grid, go into edit mode and GX1, GX1, yep, okay. So it's all on this side now. And I can now go to my target object when I hit play, get this. Now I can add a mirror modifier to get this. And then you notice something if we look at it, let me just make this a little bigger here. The first vertex here in the middle is always zero or very low. Is it zero? I don't know. Oh, and also, if you notice, we really don't get much information over here for the higher frequencies. Okay, so we can do uh, one little thing here. We take our sound spectrum. We know we want 11, but we set it to 20. Okay, and then we take another list slice and we slice out just 11. So basically from the 20 slots on the sound spectrum, we're just taking the first 11 where more music is happening. And we get this. And also, like I said, the one in the center here is always zero. So we just slice out one. You could even go two, maybe. Nah, let's, let's give you one. Length 11, and then we have something very symmetrically, uh, symmetrical looking. Cool looking, okay? So that's all there is to that. And then for the material, material is really, really easy. Um, we go to the target object, select that, give it a new material, which gives us a principle. Let's make it metallic, uh, less rough, so it looks like this. And then we want some uh, color values in there. So we take a converter color ramp. We start with a dark green. We go HSV, near is good go over to red. So now we have a ramp between green and red. This is our color. Cool. But we also want an input geometry and a vector, nope, a converter separate X, Y, Z. We take the position, whoops. We take the C as the factor and it gives us this. So this is all done in the material here. And we're done. All right, that's it. Uh, what do you think about the new uh, simulation nodes? I think it's a very powerful concept, although it's just two nodes and a little bit of setup with that struct thing and the initial data. But 
the idea is you have a loop that remembers the values from the previous frame and you can change the values inside of your loop. You can create your simulation in there. One very cool thing is that you cannot just uh, work with the data you have inside of that simulation loop. You can even create new data. So in a sense, you can even create like your own particle system with this, right? Because you can remember the location, you could remember any other value like a velocity or an age or whatever you want for your particle. And that loop always takes care of putting the particles back into the, the next frame. And inside you can create new particles because you can change that data that you have in your simulation loop. And here's a little example based on music again. <laughs> If you're a creator and you need amazing music and sound effects, check out crispy.sound slash music. And if you want to know how that was done, make sure you're subscribed because we're gonna look at that in the next tutorial. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Crispy out. For more awesome content, like and subscribe now.